Hi, I'm Dr. Jay Womack at St. Francis Hospital. Uh, this patient is a 45-year-old uh, lady uh, who has a uh, fifth metatarsal fracture. It's commonly called a Jones fracture, and she's broken it several months ago. And the problem is the Jones fracture, her particular fracture, is not healed up. And so she's here today to have a screw fixation done, a percutaneous screw fixation in an effort to uh, get her fracture to heal up that hasn't been able to do on its own. So as you can see, this is obviously her foot, and this is the area that's fractured here, the fifth metatarsal. And the problem is most fifth metatarsal fractures will heal fine on their own, but there are some in this particular area where the blood supply is not good that have a difficult time healing up on their own and sometimes require surgical fixation, particularly in athletes or active patients um, who uh, need to get back to work or to play more quickly than others. All right, so we'll have the C-arm come on in when you're ready. This is a, called a mini C-arm. It puts out a lot less radiation than uh, big C-arms do. Um, and it's a lot better for the patient and for the team in the operating room. All right, x-ray there. So we're just using a metal device here to help find our spot. And I don't know if you can see the x-ray over there. You can see the crack in the bone. Can you all see that right here where she's rotating it around? You can see that crack in the bone. So that's been there several months and hasn't shown any signs of healing, which is why we're here today to try to address that problem. So the great thing about this surgery is that it's essentially percutaneous. You usually kind of, kind of what I call two-stitch surgery. And we're really able to do it through very, very small incisions and aid the patient's recovery process because of the neat tools we have now in order to do this. Okay. You have a hemostat, please? Sorry, I'm just kind of cutting through the skin. We'll use a hemostat here just to kind of spread down to the bone surface level, and we'll get a guide wire in there. And the guide wire basically guides the path of everything else that we'll do inside of her foot in terms of screw fixation. And sometimes it can take more than one pass to get this guide wire perfect, but it's essential that you have it in the exactly correct location. So again, here's the guide wire, and what we'll do is try to put this thing in the perfect position that we desire under x-ray. Shot, please. All right, so we're kind of getting to the right spot there. So the so-called high and inside position is where we want to be. There's a perfect starting point in the bone where we want to be. Shot there. Which is pretty promising there. Okay, x-ray. You can see the guide wire going down, hopefully shot there, inside the canal of the bone. So that's a little bit on the inside, so we're going to try to kind of re-advance it a little bit and uh, get it back a little more uh, right down the pipe rather than going towards the inside. And it takes some, some doing sometimes to get this right, but it's important to start well. Shot there, because uh, that's what helps you end well. Shot there. Sometimes there's a tough area to drill through right here because the bone gets really dense where it's tried to heal itself. And so uh, you kind of almost have to drill through it. X-ray. Shot there for me. All right, so now we'll check it in the other views. X-ray for me. There we go. Shot. Shot there. Shot there for me. All right, let's take a lateral there and see where we are. Okay, we got to refire all the way or not. Okay, x-ray. No, we're okay. Thank you, though. Shot there for me. There we go. Shot, please. X-ray. Okay, shot there for me. All right, so we'll check our lateral again, see if we like our position. X-ray. It's a good starting point. We just got to end up in the correct spot. All right, let's check that. Okay, X-ray. All right, so now you guys can see we're right down the middle of the canal right there. So the reason this is so important is you see the bones curved there. We have to put a straight screw in a curved bone because they don't make curved screws. And so as a result, you really have to get your position perfect with this to make sure you get exactly where you want to be on all of the planes of the fluoroscopy. So we call them planes that you've got to make all the different views line up exactly how you want to or how they should look. Okay, shot please. So now it's pretty good. We'll just advance our wire slightly further. Shot there. Okay, that's good. So we won't need to even go that far. All right, so the, there are little sizer things for this. The, honestly, the best way of uh, measuring this is to take a screw that you think is right and hold it up on top of the foot and uh, take an x-ray and see if it looks correct. So we'll take a, uh, a 40 millimeter screw, please, by 45. The screw is just to lay the screw up on top and kind of look at it on x-ray and see if it looks like it's going to be the right screw. Shot, please. 
If you look, what we're trying to do is get the threads of it just past where the fracture is. That's all we want. We don't want to go any further than that uh, because we don't need to. And all we're looking to do is compress that bone together in the correct spot. And so that's, that's really what we're looking for with this. And so as we ream this, we're going to make sure that we don't go out the canal sides of the bone and we want to stay right in the middle of the bone. So we'll ream it under x-rays to make sure that happens. Good. So you can see we're right pretty much down the middle of the bone as good as we can be. Again, we're trying to put a um, straight thing in a curve. And so that can be extraordinarily difficult to do. That's plenty far that we need to go. So that doing all this really does two things for you when you ream it. W one is obviously you're creating a path for the screw to go into. And the other thing you're really doing is um, drilling the bone, which stimulates healing, which hasn't occurred in that area. So you saw it's kind of hard right there in that middle area to get through. And that happens because um, the bone's very, what we call sclerotic or hardened, where it's tried to heal up. And so it's frequent that it'll have a little resistance as you go through the, the site where the fracture's been trying to heal on its own. And we'll just slide this thing back in the correct spot again. This device is a tap. And what the tap does is make a pathway for the screw to go through inside the middle of the bone. And so it's that, that's what allows the threads to actually bite inside that. And we use the tap to sort of make room for the screw and make room for the threads of the screw to actually have what we call purchase or bite so that we'll get some compression or squeezing of the fracture site together. And everything we do is under x-ray because we don't want to go out of the bone anywhere and cause a problem. Shot there. So that's pretty good. That's about as far as we're going to need to go right there. And you can see the uh, threads, just like the screw will fit inside the canal of the bone there. You can see our fracture site out there where there's a gap in the outside of the bone. And uh, our alignment looks pretty good. Shot there for me. If you look there, you can see where it is straight down the pipe, right down the middle of the bone. That's what we're looking for. And so now that we've done all the tapping, we'll actually select or put the screw in there. And all this stuff is done with the cannulated, so-called the guide wire. When we put the actual screw in there, the actual screw's solid. And the reason is that solid screws are four times stronger than um, screws with a hole in the middle of them are that allow you to put it in there. You can see there's a screw right at the entrance there, and you can see the pathway in the x-ray where the screw should go. And so yet again, we'll go slowly and we'll check and make sure we're putting this thing exactly where we want to put it. And you can see the screw head going into that small incision in the side of her foot right there. Shot, please. And there it goes. X-ray. I want you all to look very carefully at that x-ray shot there is that. So you see that gap disappearing as we put that in. And usually you can get a pretty good purchase or bite as we say on these screws shot there and that's what helps them heal up. All right, so that's really good position there. So now what we need to do is just check all of our different planes. Again, all the different x-ray views and make sure we're happy with our placement. It's imperative to have good fluoroscopy for the surgery. If you can't see what you're doing, there's no way you're going to be able to put the screw in the appropriate location. And the less the, the, the doctor has to struggle identifying the correct location, the, the better the surgery seems to go. And uh, we, it's great to have that piece of technology to help us. The after, sort of aftercare for surgery, obviously you see the two stitches in there. And then we basically put just a soft sterile dressing on there. And we put that on sterile in an operating room, so we don't want the patient to take it on or off. It just stays there for two weeks unless they get it wet in the shower or some other issue like that. And then we put what's called a splint on there, which is sort of a soft cast. And it's got a hard component to the back of it, but it allows the patient to swell if they have any swelling, rather than putting a full cast on there and make sure there's no room to swell. And you're really only on that for two weeks, which is pretty great. And then the two stitches come out in the office, and then basically you can get in the bathtub or shower, or many of my athletes start in the pool immediately at two weeks out with that because we know that when you put an athlete in chest high water, it only represents about one seventh of their body weight across the fracture site. So they're able to keep their fitness up by swimming and doing other things that don't involve impact exercise so they can recover more quickly once the fracture heals up and get back on the field. Okay, so everything went fine with her surgery. Um, it took 19 minutes uh, total time to do the entire surgery from uh, skin to skin, um, which is a pretty average time uh, for something like that. Uh, it was well set up and everything. So she's got two whole stitches in her foot and a splint on her leg, and the splint will come off in the office in about two weeks, and then the two stitches come out, and she'll go into a removable walker boot device at that point, and then wear that full weight bearing for about four weeks, and then um, you, people wear that typically till about six weeks after surgery, and we take an x-ray, and then wean out of the boot into shoes. So for a recovery, total recovery time for this, if you sort of on a Division I NCAA athlete, we're playing football or basketball, usually between week eight and week nine after surgery, they're able to return to the field to play, and uh, so we anticipate that's true for all of our patients who have this as well, who are certainly uh, lower demand than those athletes are.